a month has passed since the feast of Lutakal, and it is now the eve of Ides of March. A storm unlike ever seen is raging in Rome. Fire dropped from skies, bodies spontaneously combust, lions roam the capital, and ghostly women are seen walking on the street. Casca meets Cicero on the street, evidently frightened by the eerie sights he has seen, and Cicero predicts that terrible incidents are about to unfold. Cassius arrives, confident that the storm is the wrath of gods against Caesar's tyranny and persuades Casca to join the conspirators. Casca tells him that Senate means to crown Caesar king the following day. Now with a heightened sense of urgency, Cassius and Sina decide to pull the forces of conspiracy together. Cassius, now having enlisted Casca in the group of conspirators, leads to Brutus' home. Brutus must be convinced that assassination of Caesar is a noble attempt to save people of Rome from dictatorial rule of Caesar. As Brutus was well honored, so to convince people, the Brutus must be included in the plan so that assassination of Caesar is seen as a noble enterprise. Good evening, Casca. Did you take Caesar home? Why do you look so breathless? And why that wild look on your face? Aren't you scared? When the very earth moves, I feel tempest and ocean storm. But never till tonight have you seen a tempest that drops fire. Either there's trouble in the heaven or something on earth displeases the gods. Did you see anything else? Yes. A slave held up his hand and it seemed on fire. But he was not burned. He did not feel any heat. A lion went by me, he doubt reacting to me. Women have been saying that they saw burning men walking in the street. And yesterday, an owl hooted in the marketplace at noon. When such things happen, it's a sign of bad times. It is a strange time, but men interpret things with their own perspective, which may not be the purpose of the events themselves. Will Caesar be coming to the capital tomorrow? Yes, he will. He told Antonio to send word to you that he will be there tomorrow. Good then, Kafka. Let me get out of this room. Farewell, Cicero. Who's there? A Roman! Casca! By your voice. Your ear is good, Cassius. What a night! A very pleasing night to honest men. Who the heaven breaking so? Those who know that the earth is full of forts know that the heavens rage. I have been walking unprotected, and I am unharmed as you can see. But why did you tempt the skies? Most men are afraid when the gods send us such signs. You are dull, Casca. And you either don't have the courage of the Romans, or you don't use it if you have it. You are afraid of the storm. Yet what you have not realized is that this storm has sent the signs warning us of something. Now think of a man most like this storm. With its lightning and thunder, its opening of graves, and its roaring of the lion in the capital. A man no greater than you or me in personal action. Yet grown as frightening as this storm. You mean Caesar, don't you? Be that as it may, we have become like women, yoked and burdened. The senators intend to crown him king tomorrow, and he will wear the crown everywhere, except in Italy. Then I know where I will wear this dagger. No walls, or bars, or dungeons can keep the spirit captive. When life is tired of its earthly constraints, it can easily set itself free. I can set myself free. So can I. Every person who is born that has the power to set himself free. Why should Caesar rule us then? Poor oh, man, he is deluded into thinking that Romans are just sheep. Has Rome become so trashy, so as to worship so foul a thing as Caesar? But why am I saying this to you? Perhaps you are one of his willing slaves and will try and defend him. But I am armed and willing to defend myself. Casca is not attentive. I am willing to do whatever it takes to free Rome from Caesar. Casca, I have already talked to some of the most noblest Romans about an enterprise that can have consequences that are honorable yet dangerous. I have to meet them at Pompey's post today. The night is suitable for the work in hand. Bloody, fiery, and most terrible. Someone is coming. It is Sinna. I know him by his walk. He is a friend. Sinna, where are you going in such a hurry? To find you. <coughs> who is that? Metal of Simba? No, it is Casca, one who is with us in our enterprise. I'm glad. What a fearful night this is. Two or three of us have seen strange sights. Oh, Cassius, if you could only win noble Brutus to a party. Rest assured, it will be done. Take this paper and keep it in the Praetor's chair where Brutus can find it. <coughs> Throw this message into his window and stick this on his statue with wax. Our is Brutus in Trebonius here. All that metal of Simba? 
He has gone to look for you at your home. Okay, I will hurry to drop these papers where you have told me. After that, come back to Pompey's port. Come, Kaska. We'll speak to Brutus before daybreak. He's already three fourths on our side, and he'll be wholly on our side once we talk to him. Oh, he is well regarded by all. Come, we will wake him up and speak to him. Before three o'clock.